Thy sister Sia, 25, used to have a friend Faye, 24, Faye had a boyfriend named Brett, 25. Brett cheated on Faye with Sia, then left her for Sia. Faye was devastated, and it really tore their friend group apart. Faye went on to transfer to an out-of-state college, and from what I know, has not been back since. This was about four years ago, now Sia and Brett are recently married, about two months, and that's where the issue comes in. Sia figured out how to get a hold of Faye and decided to invite her to the wedding. She said that her and Brett both missed Faye as they had all been part of the same friend group through high school. She felt like this was her last chance to try and bring Faye back into her life. I, 19, told her from the get-go that I thought that was a bad idea and that she should just leave Faye alone. She sent the invitation anyways but got no response. It's relevant to mention that Sia and Brett could only afford a pretty modest wedding. They held it on his parents' property, it was catered by a very basic cheap local restaurant. Everything else was done by family and friends. The dress code was casual, which was mentioned on the invite, as Sia called to afford a very nice wedding gown. Shortly after the ceremony started, Faye walked in and quietly took a seat. To be frank, she looked amazing. She was in a lovely dress, it was a darker color and didn't look like a wedding dress, but was of noticeably better quality than Sia's dress. She's super tatted now. Tattoos are popular around here and are something Sia and Brett both like. After the ceremony Faye stayed for about half an hour talking to other guests, then left. I guess Sia tried to say hi to her and she straight up snubbed her. It created quite a stir, how good she looked was a hot topic, rather the comments were positive or people saying it was trashy she showed up like that. Quite a few of Sia and Brett's newer friends found out the circumstances of their coming together. Sia was pretty tore up about it in the first place, but once she went through the pictures she was heartbroken. Faye made it into a few and because she was dressed so much nicer than everyone else she really stood out. There's a picture of Sia and Brett where they look really nice together, but Faye is in the background, Sia says it would be her favorite picture. She has brought Faye up every time I've seen her since. Sia came over for a visit this weekend and started talking about Faye again. What a bitch she was. Why couldn't she just not come? Who needs to ruin someone's wedding? It got to me so I asked, what did you expect? You slept with her boyfriend before he decided to leave her for you. You haven't spoken in years, and out of nowhere you send her a wedding invite. Who could pass up that opportunity for pretty revenge? It made Sia cry, and she ended up leaving shortly after. Not the idiot, because you warned her ahead of time it was a bad idea, and honestly, who invites their boyfriend's ex, who he cheated on and left for you, to their wedding. If Sia wanted to reconcile with Faye, she should have chosen literally any other way to reach out. I'm sure Faye thought Sia was being petty by sending the invite and decided to respond in kind, besides, she, Faye, could have behaved much worse if she wanted to. Is what you said a little mean? Yes. Did your sister deserve to get called out? Absolutely. They have a lot of nerve inviting her to their wedding after what they did and I can't help but think maybe your sister wanted to rub it in her face and because it didn't work out that way, she was pissed. The truth hurts. What did she expect was going to happen when Faye arrived? Was she hoping to rub her wedding in Faye's face or something, only to be upset that it backfired? Faye dodged a serious bullet in a shitty boyfriend and friend. Your sister is choosing to focus on the friend she betrayed instead of focusing on her new husband and her new marriage that has a foundation on cheating and betraying someone who was once close to them. I give this marriage a few years before one of them finds a new shiny toy to drool over as cheaters tend to do. She got her karma, she's not trying to reach out to Faye, she's trying to rub it in her face that she's marrying the douch, but when it fired back she can't handle the burn. Not the idiot. Your sister deserves to hear that and frankly more. You don't F up with people and just assume everything is fine. I know how it sounds. My fiancé, 29, is an amazing guy, sweet, funny, attractive, and hardworking. I, 29, was impressed with him from the moment I met him, and we've been together six years. We are devoted to each other and working toward building our shared life. We each put a percentage of our earnings into two funds, one for our wedding, which is a year away, and another for a down payment on a home. We each pay the same percentage, but I pay a much larger amount because I went into a higher income field. We've budgeted it out pretty well. At this rate, we'll have enough to buy a home around the same time as our wedding, as planned. 
As to the wedding, we both wanted a small one, and my fiancé and I decided to have a destination wedding. We are paying for the entire wedding ourselves. My family's pretty poor, so I've also been saving a portion of my remaining paycheck to be able to pay for all of them to come to the wedding for free. I'm also paying for one of my bridesmaids who went into teaching and doesn't make much. My fiancé wouldn't really have the disposable cash to do that, but his family can afford to pay, somewhat wealthy, and is happy for the vacation. The problem arose last week. My fiancé's best friend Tom, 30, who he asked to be his best man, got in an accident. It was likely entirely his fault as he was riding his motorcycle drunk. He suffered significant injuries, is going to have some major medical bills, and admitted to my fiancé he doesn't think he can afford to come. My fiancé wants to pay for him, several thousand dollars, and lend him money to help cover his medical bills. But, especially with everything going on, my fiancé does not have and is unlikely to be able to get the money to do either. I could afford to do both, but I don't want to. Truthfully, I can't stand this friend. He often rides or drives drunk, does not have a job, makes snarky comments about my fiancé that he insists are just jokes, but that I know actually affect my fiancé, and lives in his parents' basement, while ignoring their well-being. I was willing to have him up there as best man because my fiancé considers him a brother, and it's his choice. I wasn't happy about it, but I wasn't about to throw a tantrum about it. But with everything going on, my fiancé has suggested taking a huge chunk of our savings for a house to help, and I said no. We got in a huge fight and he called me selfish and cruel, at which point I lost it, told him his loser friend did this to himself, and that there was no way in hell I'd pay anything for his sorry ass. I ended by saying, if he can't afford to come, he can't be your best man. He hasn't spoken to me since last night and slept in the couch, while I still think I'm on solid footing, I wonder if I went too far. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You need to sit your fiancé down and tell him point blank that he is asking his fiancé to sacrifice her values and risk the down payment for your future house for a man who frequently drives drunk and is currently in a situation of his own making. Personally, I wouldn't be able to remain friends with someone who drives drunk. Putting your own life in danger, I don't really care, but risking other people's lives that makes you among the lowest of the low in my mind. Your fiancé needs a serious reevaluation of his morals. Not the idiot, this is more than him just being the best man at your wedding. It's you financing his bad decision to drive a motorcycle drunk. No way your married life should start off with a loan to him that impacts your ability to get a house, which you both saved for. It's not your responsibility to carry him financially. I have to go with not the idiot. If I were in your shoes I would do the same. You're justified in your stance, and it's unreasonable to take from your shared wedding and house fund to pay for medical expenses and travel. If your husband doesn't want to or can't use his own money for it, then I'm with you, his friend made his own bed, he can lay in it. Everyone sucks here. First and foremost, obviously, is Tom. Repeatedly driving drunk on a motorcycle is just immensely stupid. Secondly your husband. Impacting your savings so heavily is a foolish move, and it's not selfish or cruel to put your entire future on hold so you can pay for his friend's mistakes. Lastly on you. You're obviously mostly in the right here, but I don't necessarily agree with refusing to let him come to the wedding at all. Paying for your whole family to come, as well as a friend too, is pretty unfair to your fiancé. While at face value it's fair that you're both contributing an equal percentage of your paychecks, your higher earnings allow you more freedom to do things you want that he's unable to do. You paying for multiple people while he's not allowed to pay for his expected best man is really unfair and brings an unfortunate power dynamic with the finances that could be tricky once married. My sister is getting married in less than three weeks. I haven't been involved in the planning as I have my own life, but from what my mom has relayed to me it's been a nightmare. My sister wants a fancy wedding and is micromanaging everything. I have no idea how normal this is, but from what I've heard she broke down crying when her fiancé bought the wrong shade of white napkins. Her and both my and the groom's parents have invested a lot of money into this too, the tune of over 50k. In my opinion I think the whole ordeal is ridiculous, but it's not really my place to say anything at least until yesterday. An email was sent out to everyone invited to the wedding with attendance requirements. These requirements were a joke. 
Some of them were just nonsensical like what color ties are and aren't allowed, or that no one can talk to the wife or groom alone. But some were absurd like the fact that no one is supposed to take pictures except the photographer for the whole event, no facial hair will be allowed or you will not be pictured, or that any women with shoulder length or longer hair must have it cut or wear it in a ponytail. The worst though were the gift requirements. According to the email a gift of $300 value or more must be given, or $250 cash, or you will not be allowed into the venue. The email also ends with. Those who choose not to follow these rules will be asked to leave. Please think of the bride and groom's wishes during this stressful time. This is a joke, right? Like I can understand micromanaging but that's just absurd. I called my mom to make sure this was not a late April Fool's joke, and it was real. I told her that I won't be going because of this. That was wrong apparently because my sister has been blowing me up saying that I'm being selfish and that I'm ruining her day. My parents agree with her and say I'm being an idiot. My parents have told me that they will pay for my gift, but I still think that all of these rules are a joke. Would I be an idiot if I skipped out on the wedding? She doesn't care about having friends and family there, she cares about being selfish, getting as much out of it as possible, and the people are only there to make them feel good. Not only would I not go, but I would also sincerely hope everyone else refuses to go as well. They want nobody to look better than them, then have nobody else there. If the point of getting married is simply to get as much out of it as possible, you are getting married for the wrong reasons. Not the idiot. I understand the color coordination. I understand the no pictures as well. If you paid for a professional photographer then there will probably be way better pictures available, and it's common to share them amongst the guests. But that's about it. Everything else, to me, is over the top. The gift requirement would be a no-go for me. Your sister is incredibly irresponsible for sending this out only three weeks before her wedding. Demanding gifts of a certain price, especially this close to the actual wedding is absolutely ridiculous. It sounds like they're more focused on making back the money they spent on the wedding than they are on making sure friends or family are in attendance on their big day, frankly it's their loss because anyone they remove from the venue is likely still be paid for by them in terms of food or drink costs. Not the idiot. This is how you end up with an empty wedding. I can understand the color requirements for clothing but hair or facial hair, no speaking to them as individuals, minimum gift requirements, no photography. Come on. Someone has control issues. Let me start this off by saying I have always been very close to my direct family, up until about three years ago, which is when I, now 27, introduced my girlfriend, now 24, to them. My sister immediately became best friends with her, my uncles and aunts loved her, basically the entire family loved her apart from my brothers and my parents, especially my mom. Since that I started distancing myself because they would often talk about how she is not right for me, how I should find a better girl, how she was rude, slutty and so on, I honestly did not get it, she was always on her best behavior, but when questioning them about it, I would never get a straight answer as to why they acted like they did. Luckily though they would never do it in front of her, they were just a bit cold you know. However the rest of my family was lovely to her, so it made up for a lot, and I became much closer to my uncles, aunts and sister as a result. Now after three years of that behavior and me basically cutting them off apart from big holidays, because of it, I finally found out why they act like they do, because they finally told my sister. Apparently my mom knows my now fiancé's former stepdad who revealed my girlfriend was a stripper for a few months during college, we're talking at 19, before we even met. I was aware of this and honestly I don't really care, we all did shit we aren't proud of when younger, and this is not even something that weird either. But apparently in my mom and brother's mind that immediately meant she was a no good slutty girl who was looking for a provider to bleed dry, and it was their job to protect me. I am just amazed at the sheer damn stupidity of it, and I am honestly seething, as a result we decided not to invite them to our wedding. Wedding won't be for months, after all why would they want to celebrate my marriage to her, right? Meanwhile I just invited a load of extra friends and extended family of course, also invited my sister, uncles and aunts and so forth. To put it bluntly, pretty much my entire family is invited apart from my parents and brothers. As you probably expected my mom called me sobbing when she found out, and I gave her a piece of my mind about everything, including that I found out why their behavior had been so shitty before just dropping the call and blocking her. 
My dad and brothers have been raging at everyone who will listen as expected. But what really makes me doubt myself is my uncle told me I am way too harsh and should really reconsider if I want to lose my parents over this. So here I am to see what random strangers think. Not the idiot, so she used to strip when she was at college, hardly an excuse for your parents and brothers arcade thinking. Your parents and brothers should make a personal apology and then back this up by actions of treating your fiancé better. Trust me, it's worth losing them over this, they are absolute idiots and do not deserve to be at your wedding. They made their choice. If you invite them, you are saying to your fiancé that it's acceptable to behave that way towards her. Just keep repeating the reason they aren't invited. You don't choose your family, but you do choose your partner and if they can't respect that, they don't deserve to celebrate with you. Everyone sucks here. Too often posters make judgments as if the events presented here are from a movie or sitcom, and they make suggestions based on what would be the most dramatically satisfying. Choosing your true love over the objections of your small-minded family is certainly romantic, but it's not necessarily the decision that leads to a happy life. Your family is in the wrong for obvious reasons, but it came from a place of genuine love and concern for you. Backward as it is, they sought to protect you. Knowing the truth now, the mature, emotionally healthy next move would be for you to sit down with your family, explain that you already know about your fiancé's past, and say that if they cannot move past it and respect the fact that you love this woman, they aren't invited to the wedding. How were they trying to protect you if they weren't even willing to tell you why they were acting that way? That is just an excuse to defend themselves since they've acted like idiots this whole time. Weddings are to celebrate the love and union of two people, and if someone doesn't support those two people, there is no point in them being there. At the end of the day, it comes down to what you want. If you don't want them there, don't invite them, and don't let people bully you into changing your mind if that's what you truly want.